I mean, I'm going to go right to the big one here. The one that most people are worried about before I, I go into some of these other smaller ones, because I did notice this when I read this before I went on camera. Uh, but it says that they resolved an issue preventing custom schedules from working properly, which for a lot of people is really damaging their, their ability to run their franchise or run their dynasty. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your college football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. This is Matt Money Shot, sniffing out the college cheese as always. In today's video, we have a massive update for College Football 25. I'm going to go over that in a minute, but before I do, if you guys want me to continue to do update videos like this for both college football and men, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, it's going to get right into the video because this is a big list, so I want to make sure that I get through it in a timely manner. We're going to start off with a little blurb here that they wrote where they say, Hey, College Football 25 fans, welcome back to the campus huddle. You're home for all news and updates about College Football. 25 today we have an update that will cover a large portion of the game including some ability changes rating adjustments and over 700 new players are coming team builder is receiving an update uh play a friend in cut is here and it says let's dive in so we have uh number one gameplay updates that's something that obviously affects every single game uh it says players it says refresh the ability loadouts of players in front and rosters it says dev note these ability changes are based on current player performance this season and changes to their ratings. We focused on top 25 teams in the game and their players. Uh, this will result in players like Ashton Giante receiving an upgrade to his abilities, which he has a ton now. Uh, it says make sure to check out your favorite players to see if they have had any changes. Now, I did go through a couple of players that I thought were, were criminal that they didn't have any abilities. Uh, number one, Alabama receiver Ryan Williams. I know he's only 17. He's a true freshman. Uh, but he's a great player. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's continue forward. There are a lot of stuff here that uh, looks like it's right out of Madden because the, the Madden update that happened last week is going to be very similar when it comes especially to coverage shells. But before I get to that, uh, this one here is really important to me. I just talked about the option. I run the speed option a lot too. It says reduce the frequency of pitches out of tackles missing the pitch back. I don't know how much they reduced it, but hopefully it was by a lot because that was really the only downside to actually uh, running the option or running any type of option play when you have a pitch involved. Involved, is that if you pitched it out and you got hit at the wrong time or something happened, a lot of times you would miss the, the running back or whoever the, the pitch back was and it would go you know back 15 yards and you'd be lucky to get the ball back because the equivalent of throwing an interception. And it was a bit harsh because it happened a lot, but at the end of the day, it really just made you run the option that much better. But I'll be excited to see if they really nerfed that because that was really something that made up running a lot of pitch plays really kind of ineffective. Now it also says fix the aftershock ability, inappropriate triggering on blocks. Uh, that's kind of a small one there. I haven't really noticed that too much. It uh, also has a lot, like I said, these are the ones that they also fixed in Madden. The coverage shell system is kind of broken. I still don't think it's necessarily worth using at this point. I try, you do use it sometimes, but it, if it starts to mess up, I just get out of it. And there's a lot of issues that it had that were fixed here that were also fixed in Madden. It says fix an issue where using cover three shell on cover one blitz play uh, versus empty base flex. They're, they're going very specific, which like formations that it would have issues with, but I don't think that that's specific enough. I think these, these cover shells just don't work properly. I don't feel like it's just on these plays that they're talking about, but it says verse empty base flex trio or trio will result in the tight end being left wide open, which is something I mentioned. I, I mentioned in a lot of game plays where I would use covered shells, and if you use man coverage specifically, it would just mess up. Uh, you know, players would just not be covered. You would you would pull up the play art, and a lot of times the play art doesn't show you what's going on pre-play because the play art's glitching out. And that's something else that they tried to fix. So I'll talk about a little bit later in the patch notes. But that's something that's still probably an issue. So I'm going to go over some coverage shell uh, fixes that they made for the next couple here. But I still don't think it's safe to use coverage shells. I don't think they fixed all that. I I'm going to be, sh I'll be shocked if they did. But it also says fix an issue where using a too high coverage shell, cover two or cover four, etc. On a nickel over double bracket would cause the defensive alignment in a single high safety look. It says fix an issue where using a cover two shell on a cover one play would result in the tight end being left unguarded once again. Like I said, that's usually the guy that's left unguarded is the tight end. It says fix an issue where using a cover zero coverage shell on cover two man versus empty base, empty chip, or empty quads will result in the inside receiver being left unguarded. Typically, it's the one guy close to the line of scrimmage. They say inside receiver meaning the guy close to the line of scrimmage or it's the tight end. I don't know why it's having that problem, but like I said, I wouldn't necessarily uh, use coverage shell if you don't have to or if you start noticing issues. 
get out of coverage shell because I still think it's somewhat broken. I don't think it's specifically related to certain coverages or, or maybe they just nailed it. It's hard for me to say. Uh, next up, we have coverage. It said added box call logic to cover four quarters and cover four palms to better cover bunch formation route combinations. They also did that in Madden about a week ago, so it's not surprising to see that. Uh, so maybe they improved cover four uh, palms and match to the point where um, you know it's just more usable now because it's way easy to glitch out cover four match. Uh, also says here that uh, DevNote box call logic will dictate which eligible receiver a defender picks up slash matches on this uh, is especially effective against bunch and will have defenders in the best position to cover their assignments. Deep zone, quarter flat, and three red hook defenders will coordinate to make sure that all eligible receivers are picked up. And this is just specifically, um, you know, gun bunch formations or bunch formations in general. So don't expect uh, cover for necessarily to be fixed because it can still be uh, glitched out pretty easy in my opinion. Says fix an issue where giving a safety on the left side of the field, the outside third uh, defensive hot route would assign him to play the other side of the field. So that's something that obviously is ridiculous. Fix an issue where some press animations would press a receiver 10 yards down the field. Obviously, you're not allowed to do that more than five. And then it says pass blocking. This is what I was talking about earlier where you couldn't see. And I mentioned this in a previous video where sometimes you go to, to, to shift uh, uh, your your protection and there's no play art to show that. And it doesn't show it. So you have to guess, which is something that I mentioned in a previous video. It's been happening a while. Well, it says they fixed an issue where the targeting lines were not appearing when the user would enter pass block adjustments. Thank you. That was a huge problem. Uh, that's something that, you know, just pre-play art animations a lot of times don't work in a lot of different things, whether it's been the offensive line adjustments or the uh, the man adjustments. A lot of times you'll pull up your, your defensive uh, formation. You won't see your man guys to who they're supposed to be. And there's also an issue when it comes to uh, if you try to look at your, uh, your run fits for some reason, only half the run fits show up. So it's like a lot of guesswork. Hopefully they're fixing all that stuff. I don't know why that stuff's happening, but they are addressing it. Hopefully they did fix that. Now they also attacked the double a gap meta says address an issue where uh, using the defensive line slant inside command would cause defenders to rush into the same gap in Madden they took away the ability to slant inside on double a gap plays uh, hopefully they didn't do that hopefully they did something a little bit better in college but I'm guessing it was the same thing it also says change the functionality of defensive lineman shifts on double a gap uh, defensive formations to eliminate unrealistic alignment. So yeah, that's probably what they did. They probably just you took away the ability to slant inside. But in Madden, it still works pretty good anyway. It's just not disengages. It's more like just you're getting quick sheds. So whatever. But it says added a new logic for defenders to no longer be able to instantly disengage to the outside if they're giving the slant inside D-line pre-snap adjustment. So uh, like I said, in Madden, you still get pretty quick disengage. It's not a disengage. You get sheds quick. But it's, it's pretty much the same thing. So uh, a lot of the same updates uh, there as Madden, so I don't know why it took so long um, for them to uh, to do that, but it is what it is. We're going to move on to settings and UI. Uh, fixed an issue where users would not get any clock runoff with accelerated clock turned on for online head-to-head -head rank games. I don't know if I heard this recently uh, somewhere, but or if they just passed that in Madden once again, but that sounds really familiar. Fix an issue where the switch stick delay setting uh, that a user would not stick uh, once the user changed the menu, I've been mentioning it. There's a lot more issues than that. Hopefully they changed all the issues. There's a lot of things where you would change it in the menu and it wouldn't go into the game, which is another video I made uh, recently. Um, so hopefully there's more than just the switch stick, but uh, you know, time will tell. It says Dynasty. We're going to move on to Dynasty now. Fix an issue with the power alignment arch type where they would not progress uh, past block finesse. Uh, it also says updated. I mean, I'm going to go right to the big one here. The one that most people are worried about before I, I go into some of these other smaller ones. Because I did notice this when I read this before I went on camera. Uh, but it says that they resolved an issue preventing custom schedules from working properly. Which for a lot of people is really damaging their, their ability to run their franchise or run their dynasty. So that's something that's a really big thing that they uh, they tried to address. And a lot of people were leaking that out before these patch notes even came out in, on Twitter and on, or on X or whatever you want to call it. So that's something that's definitely very important. So let's get to the rest of these. It says, updated Bryant-Denny Stadium to be uh, Saban Field at Bryant-Denny Stadium. And that says, fix an issue where the prospect list performed to full refresh every time a recruit is targeted. Uh, various news story fixes, you know, various uh, stability issues. Like That's typically what they say. Says, res or, here, I already read that one. It says, fix an issue with how heights were displayed in the team needs screen. Fix an issue where the free practice tile would not always appear in the Dynasty Hub. Fix an issue where you cannot super sim from the play calling screen when playing as a coordinator. Uh, increase the amount of wear and tear damage body parts 
uh, recover on on weak advance, uh, which is something that I noticed when I don't play a lot of French or uh, Dynasty, but I do have an offline, and I noticed that it doesn't really, <laughs> um, you know, the wear and tear doesn't really work. Uh, I think as they as they hoped, and they've still been doing a lot of. Uh, adjustments when it comes to the wear and tear system. It says, when viewing a recruit in the recruiting board, you're now able to change which recruit you are looking at by going up or down on the right stick. Uh, and then we also have some college ultimate team ones. That's it for uh, for Dynasty. Obviously, there was a big one in there, uh, but the rest of them seem somewhat small. Uh, for college ultimate team, it says, included play a friend as a playable mode, which is cool. If you have uh, somebody, you know, that's some, a way they're trying to bring people in to cut. Now you can play a friend and bring your friend in and spend all his money. Uh, it says, increase a AP limit from uh, to 12 for season three. I'm guessing it was at 10. I haven't played cut this year much. Uh, it says increased AP cost of aftershock from two to five. So having four defensive linemen with aftershock is not going to happen anymore. Uh, apparently, aftershock is one of those abilities that's ruining cut. Uh, so they changed that. Uh, it says fixed issues that were causing the following combinations to be unplayable in lineups: Warren Sapp, and Booger McFarland, which I remember hearing before. That's not the first time that I heard there was an issue with Booger McFarland's card. Uh, Brian Bosworth and Peyton Wilson, Tavon Austin and Camden Benjamin. Uh, players can now have both a Travis Honey receiver and a Travis Honey cornerback in your lineup at once, which, you know, that makes sense. They usually allowed that for Deion Sanders back in the day. Uh, it says fixed players' uh, appearances and silhouettes. Nissan Stadium is now the default stadium for PlayStation tournaments. Uh, it says fixed a crash that was occurring when reaching gameplay after uh, reaching your favorite team within your profile. Interesting. Uh, it says fixed stability issues that were causing long load times in menus after using after users navigated to the item binder. Fix an issue with the open next pack functionality. I didn't, that, that's not working. Okay. Uh, promoted promoting to starter from the lineup uh, from the item detail view no longer duplicates the player's name on the screen. In lineup tags are no longer added on player items. That are not in your lineup when flipping the uh, when flipping them in the binder in the item binder. Fix an issue with live events tabs that caused the screen to flicker after navigating around. Fixed overlap text on auction detail screens. There's a lot of really small stuff here. It looks like they spent most of their time in cut, even though the larger issues are obviously in Dynasty. But you know where the money goes when it comes to EA. Increase the size of NAT uh, bound and limited labels that appear on player items. That's, I don't know why. Okay, they just made that bigger. Okay. Uh, position names no longer overlap with the lineup tabs on the lineup screen. Uh, viewing the back of a player item in the fantasy pack and advancing to the next round no longer causes attributes to the previously viewed item to appear instead of the correct item attributes. Cleaned up overlapping text with pack offers to, in stores. And that says stars within a challenge sequence and milestone screen are now displaying correctly. Uh, selecting a wild card slot in any set no longer allows you to choose from any player in your collection. Previously, users would select a player and then receive a server error afterwards. Now, that's it for cut. So maybe be interested to get a cut a little bit. Let me know in the comment section if you guys want me to do some cut. Uh, Road to Glory, we have uh, two things. It says various scenario fixes, removing a rogue, a rogue, <laughs> a rogue, a rogue pickup basketball scenario that triggers multiple times for some players. That's really weird. Uh, presentation and UI updates. Now, this is probably one of the bigger ones. Lots of uniform pieces, lots of new jerseys. I'll have that displayed on screen. Uh, this big piece here, it says added uniform pieces for Florida State, SMU, US, UCF, Texas State, Ole Miss, UNLV, Illinois, Miami, Oregon, uh, Oregon State, my bad, not Oregon, Cal, Old Dominion, Toledo, Oregon, yeah, it's in there, uh, Texas A&M, UTSA, James Madison, Colorado, Arizona State, Stanford. I'm not going to read all these. You can see them all on the screen. Hopefully, I remember to put that or it's going to be confusing. It says, Updated pre-existing uniform pieces for 2024 season from SMU, Kent State, New Mexico, Washington State, Ohio State, Florida Atlantic. And then it says introducing 718 new NIL players. I know the rosters haven't been accurate. The rosters from the offline and the online uh, road to college full players don't match. I'm hoping that they match now because I tried to do a gameplay the other day with UTSA because the offline uh, friend, the offline uh, roster I think had like a 95 speed receiver. So I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to use them. And then I get on and he's not there. So hopefully Hopefully that's what they're talking about other than rather adding new players but it is what it is it says competitive uh nissan stadium has been added to the game and then it says additional ratings updates for players updated overall team rankings note a uh, dev note these rankings change 
Uh, changes are exclusive to play now and road to college football playoffs. So that's cool. Uh, and then it says Team Builder. Introducing Adobe Express integration for Team Builder. Dev note, the Team Builder is getting an upgrade. We're excited to announce a new partnership with our friends from Adobe, Adobe Express, a content uh, design generation tool is now integrated as an optional feature in the Team Builder, allowing you to express your creativity and customize your experience in more ways than ever. To utilize the tool, head to your logos page and click Create with Adobe Express. Simply create an Adobe account or log in with an existing one to instantly access up to 25 credits to use towards logo generation or designs from scratch with the powerful design elements built into Express. Design away and then click save in Adobe Express tool to get back to Team Builder, importing your new custom image into your logos page. From there, you can apply your custom layers to your stadiums, uniforms, and more. Now that sounds cool, but it also sounds like they're trying to figure out a way to make money off of that when they're talking about credits that you're getting free, meaning that eventually you're probably gonna have to pay for that, or the fact that uh, a lot of people don't have Adobe Express already so that's definitely interesting I, I don't know if that's uh you know that might be a way that they're trying to generate more profits in some way by by teaming up with adobe but i really don't know but either way the uh the the it, i mean if you're into team builder hopefully it's working properly because i know it's had a lot of issues this year uh but that's it they have a, a few more things here it says dev note before we let you go we want to let you know that the ratings adjustment new nil players and new team rankings arrive later today so stay tuned on twitter and instagram uh, to know when those updates will be live. So they're going to, uh, you know, basically let you guys know on Twitter and Instagram what players got changed specifically because they haven't actually done that. If you guys want to see me do a video about that tomorrow, let me know in the comment section because I probably will. I'm going to put this one out for this update and then tomorrow I'll go over all the players as they come out on uh, Twitter and all that stuff. So that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.